Well, it's your boy Chonis. I'm out here drinking the beer. Just that goddamn hopadillo right there, that fucking Carback Brewing IPA, motherfucker. Tell you what, that's a goddamn good IPA, tell you what. If you haven't noticed, I'm out here on Thursday, because it's technically my Friday. Yes, I'm my teeth all with these braces. Just a short update on that. I get a new tray on the 29th of this month, because next week they officially reopen, and at least I can get my teeth fixed on time. But yeah. I'm sitting on my back patio because one, it's actually a nice day today. This whole week has been fucking cold as shit, tell you what. Been fucking waking up to where it's like fucking 30 degrees in the morning. The high's like fucking 60, 65. It's like, goddamn, it's fucking, and it's windy as hell too. So it's not only cold, it's windy cold. So it's fucking worse. So. Temperature today, we're actually going to get up to the fucking, like, uh, 70s, and then tomorrow's going to be in the 80s, and then back down on... Wait, no, 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 I take that back. Today was supposed to be the fucking 80s. Tomorrow, it goes back to being freezing-ass fucking cold. Because you know, it's how fucking Texas is. Or at least West Texas. I mean, goddamn weather around here. Like I said, last few weeks, you're like, oh, today's a nice day, and then the next day, it's like a fucking blizzard through here, except there ain't no snow or ice, it's just fucking cold so you got that so like i said today's a nice day i was like man it's it's not too hot man, it ain't sure as hell not too damn cold i was like i don't even have to turn on a damn fucking air conditioner outside so i was like well shit i got me because you know like i said they shut down the plant in mexico that makes corona modelo in the fucking pacifico so i was like well, damn, I got, every fucking week i'm buying me a 12 pack of modelos because i was like god damn i'm just gonna be fucking limited i tell you what so like I said, it's, it's a Thursday. It's my Friday since I have three-day weekends, which I get. I, I do a work update, too, in this video because yeah, it's common. So like I said, it got me on 40 hours, so we got basically four-day, 10-hour shifts, and then three days off. So it's like, okay, I like that. That's how it should be. So Thursday, I go down to the straps, and I get my beer. So, like I said, ever since I knew that plant down in Mexico shut down, I was like, shit, my favorite beer is about to be fucking limited. So, every week, I go down there and give me a 12-pack of that Modelo's. Like I said, my last 12-pack, I got about three cans of it left. So, got me another 12-pack, so I'm good for a whole other week. Plus, like I said, every time I go down there, I get me a six-pack of the fucking of this Carback Brewing beer, which, technically, in this region, they only sell the Hopadillo's or the Love Street, which are both very good beers, mind you. Oh, I'll say I'm kind of a little fool because, like I said, well, that'll help me with the alcohol. Because, like I said, my mom was like, man, we got to help our local restaurants. I'll tell you what, in these dark times, we got to do that. So, we got this one local restaurant. This is a local Mexican food joint out here in Odessa. It's called Dos Compadres. Fucking badass. Because, one, I like Dos Compadres because I can get out there, give me some burritos, tacos, whatever. That's fucking, fucking awesome. I do it with the chile. The chili they got for their chips and everything. Oh, I'll tell you what, that's the best damn chili I've had in this damn town. But not only that, they got Modelo on draft. So I was like, shit. I love, like, on the weekends going into those compadres for lunch. Be like, well, hell, even on my days off, I go down there with my mom, take her to lunch. And be like, man, I'll take a bear and some burritos. Eat some of their dinners. And uh, my mom goes there because she likes their fucking, what, their chili rellanos. That's what she likes. So, well, like I said, because of this pandemic, you can't go in there and eat. Hell, we don't, we don't want them going out of business because, like I said, I, that's one of those things. Like, it's like, man, it's the weekend. We're going to go out here. We're going to go shopping, do something or whatever. And it's like, man, it's lunchtime. Fuck it. Let's go down to those Padres, get some food and beer. And it's pretty good. So, like I said, well, they got to where you can order online and whatnot or call in, you know, that good shit. Go down there, order what you want, and then pick it up. So today we had that. I got my fucking number nine, the Gill Special. Two fucking smothered burritos. Ooh. I'm kind of full, but at the same time, like, man, I know I ain't going to be hung over tomorrow. Excuse me. 
So, you got that. That's what I did, and like I said, I told my mom I'm going to be out in the back patio because, like I said, it's a nice day, and I'm going to be sitting on the back patio enjoying the sun and whatnot, hanging out with the fucking stray cats we got out here. One of them right now sitting right at the water food bowl. That fat fucking son of a bitch. It's not really fat. It acts like a fat cat because the cat, damn cat's like, I'm starving. I'm like, bitch, there's a dead bird out here in the backyard. I seen you munching on it. You ain't fucking starving. But they're wanting their cat food. Basically, the cats I got, they're not fat cats, but they're fucking gluttons. I'll tell you that much out there. So... Well, right yeah, chill on my back patio, blowing off steam, relaxing and shit. Well, like I said, I, I said I was going to do a work update too. I already said by my my teeth that I get new trays on the 29th. They open up next week, and my dentist opens up next week. And uh, like I said, they pack because, like I said, man, everybody been trying to get their fucking teeth fixed. And, and it's one of those like, man, they they only opened up. Like, cause uh, last time I, I got these, I got the tray before and this set here before the whole shutdown thing. I went in the next day after they called because I was at work, so they couldn't really, I didn't really answer my phone, so. They told me, like, hey, we're about to be, the ADA shut us down. So, if you want to pick up the trays, you come in today. I called them right before they closed, and my doctor, oh, that dude, Dr. Cha. Shout out to that fool. He's a Hong Konger. But uh, they called me back. And it's like, man, I'll, I'll be here. I'll, I'll give it to you and whatnot and deal with all that. So I was like, okay, okay. So I went the next day and got my new, uh, I got my new braces. I got my new trays then. And then I got this pair right there. He gave me this pair because he was like, man, to be honest, like I said, the ADA is doing this to kind of do as a preventative measure. We don't, but he's like, man, to be honest, I don't know if this is going to be bad or not. Because like I said, he's still got family back over in China, and he says it's bad. So so he was like, man, I don't know how bad it's going to get here, so I don't know how long we're going to be shut down. So here's your other set. So this should take care of you for your whole month of this whole month. At least basically since you wear them for two weeks, you got it for four. You got two sets for four weeks. So. Hopefully by then we open up, which technically this is the second week on these and I got to wait a week and a half, which is not that bad. He even say, he's like, man, you can go a month, maybe a couple more weeks after that with them. Because like, after that, they, it's like they're not changing your teeth, but they act as kind of like a retainer. So it's like it's keeping your teeth where they're at. So when you get your new set, it keeps on it. And it's like mainly because it's like this is unforeseen. So it's like. The process of straightening your teeth out may take a little bit longer. So I was like, man, it is what it is. I don't give a shit. I mean, so I called him today. And I was like, man, all right. I called him because I was like, God damn. Like I said, I was supposed to change them out this week because this is the second week I've had them. So I was like, God damn. So I called him, asked him when would it be possible to come in to change this out. And that's when they told me, like, well, we. We, we open up officially back next week, but uh, we can get you in on the 29th, and if people cancel on us, they'll you know, we'll get you in earlier. We'll call you and update you. I'm like, I'm like 29th's fine with me. I don't care. As long as you got me set to go in at a certain time to do something, I'm like, okay. I, 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 as, long as, I, as long as I got an appointment, go in there and we can continue on. So, that's... That's some good news. Plus, hearing from them sounds like they doing okay too over there, which is also good news too during these dark times. Cause like I said, they got shut down. I mean, their workers been on unemployment too, so it sucks for them. Which brings me to my next thing about my job. I've been lucky so far, but like I said, I work in oil and gas. And if anyone ain't familiar with oil and gas, I'll tell you right now, the fucking market done crashed. Hell, I got a $20 bill in my fucking wallet, which means I can find me a fucking 55-gallon barrel of fucking oil. That's the fucking price right now. Right now, today, oil ended at like $19 and I think 70 cents. And I'm like, 
Man, this shit is fucking worthless. I tell you what, it's fucking worthless. Like, nobody make a profit. Nobody. No one in the goddamn world's making a damn profit off this because, like I said, they jack. Because uh, if you listen to the fucking capitalist pigs, they want it basically at about 40 to $50 a barrel. That's when they can still turn a profit off of their fucking oil. Basically, 45 to 50 is the minimum requirement of where they can make a profit. That's how the industry works. Anything below that $45 mark, well, you fucked. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't gonna lie, you, you, you just done fucked. Like I said, everyone in my industry knows this shit. If it goes below that, you're like, well, you fucked. And it, it's worse, like I said, if you're a driller, like you work on the drilling rigs, like right now, the ones who are actually drilling new wells, holes up, like, Man, we're going to get that oil, but we got to drill like 500, 12,000 feet, whatever, to get to that goddamn pocket. They were the first ones that basically get hit with the unemployment layoffs, firing, boom, shutdowns. I mean, it's gotten so bad. I mean, I've I've almost been in this industry for about 10 years. I tell you what, I got hired on in 2012 is when I fucking started out in this industry. But like I said, growing up in this Oh, like Odessa's an oil town, so it's like, basically, I'm like fucking sixth, seventh generation motherfucker in this damn industry. So, like I said, growing up, you've been through the fucking booms and busts and whatnot, and uh, you see this shit. So, yeah. Like I said, usually when that happens, drilling's always the ones that, like, you get shut down. But it's the first time I've ever seen it where they're literally like, yeah, we're shutting drilling altogether down. Like, we're capping wells. Like, we done. Like, no more drilling, nothing new, no. Even if jobs we have pending, shut down. Like, they're basically like, yeah, we ain't drilling no wells, oils. Like, we're shutting production down. You're like, oh, oh, fuck shit. God damn. And like I said, I'm part of the industry that works with the fracking shit, which fracking still kind of goes on after drilling, you know, hitting some wells, expanding them, stuff, but at the same time, we got a glut on our hands. Which means we everybody's got too much fucking damn oil. So, I mean, it's gotten to the point like, man, oil's technically fucking worthless. Like, man, it's there's so much of it around. It's like, man, I can fucking bathe in that shit, and there ain't nothing. <sighs> Excuse me, I burped. So, like I said, it's it's been watching it like over the last. <laughs> Week it's been going from like nineteen fifty to twenty dollars every day. It's float between there, which you're like, well, ain't shit. I mean, like I said, I'm a communist, and I'm sitting there like, well, I don't really give a shit about profit. I mean, like, to me, this is perfect because it's like, man, now everybody has access to affordable fuel. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I went and filled up my Jeep yesterday, and gas was about a dollar fifty-five. I haven't seen it below two dollars since. Fuck, maybe 20 fucking years back before I was a fucking teenager, tell you what. Maybe back when I was 10 years old, back when a Bush, Bush got ele- elected and shit. I think that was before it became $2 and shit. Because when I was in high school, it was about three fifty a gallon. So since then, to me, I'm like, man, gas is kind of already cheap, but... But that's because I grew up where, like, man, I was buying gas. When I was able to, like, have a job, buy gas, and spend bills and money and shit, gas was three fifty. Like, that was fucking high dollar right there. So, like I said, when it was two fifty, people bitching about it. I'm like, man, that's fucking, that's kind of cheap. Now I'm seeing that at $1.55. I'm like, man, this shit is fucking dark cheap. And I'm sitting there, like like I said, I feel, I was at empty yesterday. Like, the E-Light was on, everything. Like, man, you you got, like, five miles to fill up. That's that's what my tank was. Stopped by the gas station right there off of the corner where I usually go, at the Straps convenience store where they got it, where they got that uh, Sudoco fuel, dollar fifty five. It's like okay, let's fill this up. Basically, that's a twelve gallon, or no, not twelve gallon, about fourteen gallon tank. I got in my Jeep. I spent $21.50. And I'm sitting there like some bitch. I've been having to pay at least $30, $35 a tank. You're telling me it's 20 bucks? 
Holy fucking shit. I'm like, this is fucking awesome. This is the greatest thing to ever happen. That's how I would be if we didn't have a goddamn fucking pandemic on our hands. To where, like, man, gas, I can pay $20 bill, get a full fucking tank of gas, I can travel wherever the fuck I want. But since we got a pandemic on, can't really go anywhere because everything's fucking shut down. So you're like, yay, $20 a gallon on the gas. It's when I was like, I'm kind of happy, but I'm sad because it's basically fucking worthless. Because you can't do shit. When I started working on gas now, and like, we were fully totally bringing me to the problem. Like I said, it's at 1950. It's gotten to the point, like, almost everybody's like, nope, we ain't doing shit. We're not doing this. But like, everybody's fucking slashing all the corporations, slashing budgets, trying to, trying to survive, make it through, whatever. Kind of why you have, like, a shitload of fucking half the goddamn population of the United States on unemployment. Because... We got a retard for a president. He don't know shit. Worst part is, he doesn't listen to nobody who actually has any goddamn sense. Which makes it worse. It's like, goddamn, I thought Obama and Bush were bad. But goddamn, this motherfucker making loads of fucking idiots look like geniuses. And Bush was an idiot. But he made that motherfucker look like a goddamn genius. That, that That's, that's pretty hard. Because, I mean, that motherfucker used to be my governor and... Yeah, but I know how fucking retarded that motherfucker is. He's pretty dumb. But anyway. Like I said, he got him fucking the whole... Uh, he's basically fucking everybody with a 10-foot pole. That's what that, bi- that son of a bitch is doing. Because you know... He don't give a fuck. He gonna... You can tell him no. He's like, I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna rape your ass. That's what fucking Trump is. I'll tell you what. I mean, same with Biden, because fuck that puto. Fuck Biden. Fuck Trump. Democrats and Republicans can kiss my goddamn ass, because I'm a goddamn fucking red-blooded fucking communist motherfucking son of a bitch. But, back to the story of what I was trying to get to at work. So, today, like I said, it's a weekend. Everyone's like, man, we, we had some work today. Able to do this. Right as we're punching out, they have to tell us, like, hey, just let y'all know, we're on the borderline of our productivity scale, and uh, we might be getting furloughed. That's what they fucking tell us. They told us, like, yeah, the Tulsa plant, they furloughed all their productivity, guys. Because they can't keep a product. It's like, well, how the fuck you going to keep productivity when ain't nobody buying fucking shit? Like, everybody's in the same damn boat right now. Like, God damn it, everyone's cutting their budgets. So... Instead of the fucking, you know, the CEOs and the fucking board of directors, instead of them taking a 50% pay cut, which those motherfuckers don't do shit for the corporation. They sit on their fat ass all day smoking goddamn cigars. They don't do a damn thing. They don't make the goddamn wealth. They don't fucking make the jobs. They don't do fucking shit. They ain't making out the product out there fucking ass, busting their butts, fucking working fucking seven days a fucking week just to basically, hey, we keep the goddamn lights on and I can feed my family. Hell no, those motherfuckers just sit on their ass. All damn day. Not doing a damn thing except looking at the fucking stock market. But those motherfuckers ain't gonna fucking take no pay cut because fuck them, they're bourgeoisie cunts. So what are they gonna do? They're gonna furlough hardworking people who got, you know, luckily for me, I knew the industry I was getting in, so I gotta, uh, I've been saving for about the last 10 years. So I, I kind of have a safety cushion. But some people... They kind of not very good with their spending, but at the same time, it's like man, they they got they got a wife, they got like two, three, four, five kids, they got to take care of. Like they 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 have they start to try to like a lot of guys that were they like they have infants, they have kids, like they they starting families and shit. Like I said, they're my age or they're younger. Like they they got little ones, they got kids. They like I said, five, six, eight years ago, they like man, we're gonna start a family, and now look at it, they're like. Shit, how the fuck am I going to feed my eight-year-old son or my eight-year-old daughter? Like, shit like that. And I mean, I work with some guys who are older. They're like, man, my kids are teenagers. They they, they kind of part-timers. They, like, they contributing to us. Like, but still, damn, like, we got families out here. But these fucking cunts don't give a shit. 
That's kind of why I'm a goddamn communist. Because I learned 10 years ago, they don't give a shit. They don't. If you don't sacrifice blood for their fucking profits, they don't give two shits about you. That's a hard ass truth. Like I said, I got, like they told us that news today. Like they made what's bad? They made the fucking lead dude. They the fucking fucking higher ups didn't have the fucking balls to come out there and tell us this fucking bullshit. They gotta make one of the fucking peons do it, which is our lead, which is a nice guy. But they had to make him fucking do it because they didn't have the fucking balls to do it. Which sucks, because now you got some people mad at him, but it's like, man, this motherfucker's just a messenger. He's in the same boat as us. He, he gonna get fucked, too. And that's, that's what's fucking shit. Like, he's got the, 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 the fucking CEO on the border. He's like, dude, they told us, like, well, we took a 15% pay cut. I'm like, motherfucker, you can take a 50% pay cut. Fuck you. You don't do shit for this company. You just sit there and you just fucking smoke cigars, drink wine all day, pussy ass bitches. That's what they do. They got us workers out here. Basically, we losing jobs, we losing insurance. So it's like, man, and the shitty part is we got a pandemic going on. So if you lose your insurance, you're like, if I get sick, well, I die. Because I ain't going to make my family go into debt. It's like, no, I'd rather die than put them in fucking debt. And that's the bad part. That's, why, that's another reason why I'm a fucking Congress. Like, no, healthcare you should be taken care of. Like, you shouldn't have to worry about that bullshit. You shouldn't have to worry about that shit. You shouldn't have to go into fucking debt for bullshit like that. But yeah, that's how this shit going on. I might get furloughed and lose my job and shit. And I already made promise that if I lose this job, this is my last job in oil and gas because it's like, well, it's fucking worthless now. Like, I already knew about five years ago where energy is, like, starting to change into a new direction. But at the same time, it's like this is one of the few skills I know how to live in my damn town. It's like what's happening to the coal mining towns. That literally their whole industry is centered around coal. So when coal fucking goes, it's like, well, you all fucked. That's literally how Odessa is. And it was bad. If oil fucking takes a hit, the medical industry takes a hit. Because the medical industry was built around fucking oil industry. Because that's who all the fucking dumbasses were getting hurt. Same thing with education. But it's gotten to one of those points. You have to sit there and it's like... I really don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. They said, I got money saved up. But at the same time, you look at... I was like, maybe I go to school, get a bachelor, but it's like, I can't afford that education. I'll go right back into debt again. That's what's shitty. I'll go right back into debt where I was at 10 years ago when I went to college. Went into fucking debt. I don't want to do that again. It makes you wonder if... Fuck, like I said, all the way it is, it's like, well, everything's fucking worthless in this town because you know the fucking landlords... They don't give two fucking shits about nothing, so prices haven't gone down for rent. Like I said, I'm very thankful that I live with my mom in a fully paid off house because my mom, 10 years ago, told me, you can't afford rent, you stay at the house. So. Make, literally, I'm thinking about immigrating. I mean, it's one of those things, like, just kind of wait and see, see how goes out but like i said if this all crashes and burns like i said as soon as this pandemic is over i might have to immigrate to a different country because it's all shit out here and i don't know what to tell you i don't sure go shit but it's all fucked if i can't find any job anywhere in the states i'm gonna have to immigrate i mean that's bottom line Uh, that's what I'm struggling with because I don't know if I still can't make up my mind about that decision. But it's a thought that's crossed my mind. It's like I'm going to have to move. I'm going to have to leave my family behind. I've got to do something in order to survive. So. This video is about 25 minutes long. Like I said, I'm pretty drunk because I've been drinking IPAs. And I'm 
because of the social distancing thing, I can't hang out with the Vatos and stuff. So I haven't been able to fucking de-stress, blow off scene, whatever. And that's kind of why I'm thankful for YouTube. Because basically it lets me basically vent and blow off steam to you guys. So share with your friends. Subscribe. Hit the like button. Everything. I appreciate it. What not. And like I said, times are tough. But this is your boy Chonis out here telling everyone keep your damn heads up high. Fuck. We going to get through this. One way or the other, we going to get through this. Tell you what, that's what we going to do. Just to all you vatos out there, cheers. Peace.